segregated my life was in St. Louis because you know we used to go down to the Central West End you remember yep. that that was the thing to do when we were in mm -hmm. high school and yep, college yep. and stuff like that but then there was a time where people started messing up the people after us they started right. messing up and they started keeping people away from the Central West End and going down on the riverfront and everything right right when I got to um to LA I was working in Santa Monica and I worked for a Japanese um engineering firm okay and so they called we had dim sum and dim sum is a type of, you know, uh, food, uh, Japanese food. And, you know, it, even in St. Louis, if you talk now and somebody says they want Chinese food, what are they going to say? Let's Probably go to the Chinese. Mm -hmm. Go to Chinese, yep. Chinaman. I mean, that's it. And I tell people that and they're like, Chinaman? What? Yeah. What? Yes. <laughs> but it that's wasn't it. until I went to Mizzou and then I got out to L.A. and I realized saying Chinaman is racist. Yeah. But nobody means it that way and nobody even thinks about it. But I'm saying that these are the things that happen. Right, and these, right. you know, when I was talking to somebody and I realized I we never had any white people come to our house. It wasn't that we didn't, we weren't friendly. We were friendly. Hey, how you doing? Like I remember when we did our floats, because you know class of 88 kept winning all the floats. Uh okay, the way. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, we went to Penny's house. I won't say her last name, but we went to Penny's yeah, house exactly. and we did our clothes at their house. And that was really wonderful. So we were able to go over there and it wasn't that we didn't talk, but it wasn't that we were friends. We didn't, we didn't intermingle. And yeah. so, like you said, with guys, it's a little different because you have sports and things like that. But that, you know, I was in pep club with some of these girls and things like that. And it was never a problem. Mm -hmm. I just wouldn't say that we intermingled a lot. You know what I mean? See, that but, was our problem. That was our yeah. problem. We, we intermingled. So our floats was like garbage because we, we were too talking, hey, we supposed to be working on this flow, eh? We talking, about, yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but what I can say, one of the sad things I will say, and then we can probably get off this subject, but um, you know, in the last five years or so, when it came to elections, mm -hmm. and a lot of the uh, white people who did go to Riverview have now moved out to St. Charles and things like that. Yeah, and, yeah. and then they have so many bad things to say about Riverview where they feel like they don't want anybody to know they're from North County or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. And it's really sad, you know, to me, because, you know, I know that our, you know, our, our area Hathaway, I think we just had less integration because when we lived there, there were a lot of older white families there and then right. they moved and then mm -hmm. younger black families came in. So it wasn't a lot. We just didn't have that many. You know right, what I mean? Right, right. And then when we got to junior high, of course, we incorporated and then we got to high school, of course, it was more. And so by the time my brother, who was seven years behind me, got to Riverview, it was like, you know, probably 95 percent black mm -hmm. by that time. But in yeah. second grade, it was the opposite. <laughs> so right, it, right. it didn't really change a lot. So I could just say now that I'm glad we're talking about this and whoever's going to watch, I just, um, you know, it's OK to prefer people people who are like yourself, but don't limit yourself. And right. at the same time, don't impose who you are on other people. Like this whole mask debate and things like this and this whole vaccine debate. I mean, I'm dating this broadcast, but you know, I'm angry that people don't give a dang on about other people so much yeah. that they would be so selfish and so self-righteous and you know, using religion and, and things like that as justification for the things that are going on and, and making mass political and things. It really bothers me. And I think that we definitely have a lot more in common than we have different. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm not gonna sit here and take a whole lot of mess either. Gotcha. So that's what I have to say. And, and, and again, like you said, and, and, that's, <laughs> and that's funny because that's some of the stuff that, I mean, I got into a, 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 a debate, which was funny. I got into a debate on Facebook with Mr. Walters. We got, oh. into, we got into a debate on Facebook about, about uh, 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 it was about civil, it was dealing with dealing with race situation or whatever. And the thing of it was that I said to him, I said, now you, you taught me in high school that as long as your opinion doesn't 
force somebody to feel a certain kind of way or force itself on somebody, it's fine. He said, you taught me to listen and then deal with what works and what doesn't work to me and say, I, I'm only speaking on my behalf, but this is how I feel about it. And you taught us to accept somebody else's opinion. I however, said, however, <laughs> however, however, what did he do? <laughs> And that's what I'm saying, it, 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 it switched, I'm like, I'm like, so how can you tell me as a kid? You know what? I don't want to defame him, so I'm going to make a disclaimer. Okay. He was the sponsor of, uh, of the um, student council when I was in it, and I thought he was awesome. I never had him as a teacher, but I was definitely involved with, you know, school spirit and all that kind of stuff. And the last time I said anything, he had said something on one of my posts, and it was horrible. And I said, I cannot believe you of all people would say something like this. You know, the things that you taught, you being at our school, and how would yeah. your father feel if he knew you were saying something like this? This is this is ridiculous. And you never need to comment on one of my posts again. Mm. So, yeah, that's and I, mean. I, meant, that. And I yeah. meant that because what I'm saying is how can you how can you teach these kids? How can you do this stuff? And then all of a sudden, so I guess something in him, in him with his political feelings. I don't know right. what it is, but you mentioned him by name, but I'm just telling you that burns my butt because I, I unfriended a lot of people on Facebook and I did not unfriend him because I just kind of wanted to see if he was going to say anything else, but he did not. And that's probably for the best. But, and, and like I said, but again, like you said, it was a, it, it's, it's, a, it's amazing and it catches you off guard when somebody who at that point in time, you like say, had the utmost respect for and like I said, and the thing about it was, was that after I said that, he said, you're correct. You, 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 you're right. I taught you to listen and allow people to express how they feel and deal with that. I mean, like I said, it, it's, it's, it's all about your choice and how you deal with it. And I'm like, I'm cool with it. So again, I mean, that's just some of the stuff that, that we dealt with. And it was like to go through, because you know, also, let's just kill it right here too. You know, back in the day when they compared, they said that our school was one of the lowest and, and we, we didn't learn and we wasn't doing this that other. And then you go off to school and run into people and you're like, you went, where? Really? They said that we didn't do this and couldn't do that. And I believe, I mean, it made, it made for me, it made it so much easier to go to college because you had, you had the seven different buildings nine buildings that you dealt with when you get to college you got a whole campus to deal with and again it was it was so much of of your your finding a niche and rolling with it to where we were we were ready for college better than we thought but because of what people were saying in this area we felt like dang you know maybe we ain't maybe we ain't and it took me coming back and then having my daughter jordan and being a part of the hazelwood school district and found that they didn't have a junior high. They was just, I'm like, how, wait a minute, y'all behind us then. We had, a, we had a junior high when I was in school. So, you know, it was just, it was just crazy stuff to find out as you go older, how stories set up situations yep. and, and, and how people, people for some reason just have, have an, an urge to make people feel that they're lesser than what they are. But again, Jolena, I, I got two degrees. How many you got? Only one. You got one, but 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 see, you got one. And you went to where? You went you went where? No, University of Missouri, Columbia. Oh, Riverview Garden Senior High. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just, hey, it's like, hey, you know, yeah. Give me that West School. <laughs> you know, and I mean, it's it's but like I said, I think that, and that's the other beautiful part of it is that. I think it's funny now because a bunch of students who who were young, who were who I said who are 10 and, and 15 years behind us, when they see us and we put one review hats and shirts and all that kind of stuff, they like, man, you was review? Like, yeah, I was review too. Like I, I just went somewhere yesterday and I had on a review garden, uh, uh one of our uh, shirts. And one of the dude who he went to, I found he went to Hazelwood, he told these three young ladies, so I'm like, mm. Your boy got a review shirt on over there. It's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's what that's the school. I'm like, okay, cool, cool. I mean, it, it's it's a great thing to be a part of that because you know, in, in St. Louis, if you went, if you didn't go to Vashon 
or Sumner, they don't really say nothing about you. But now I'm Beaumont or Beaumont. Oh Beaumont, oh Beaumont. But now they, I mean, but, but like I said, more and more, huh? Sold in too. I mean, those were the yeah, schools, right? Yeah, sold in too. But so those again, were the city, city schools. Yeah. City school, right? See, city school, because again, they were net, they were neighborhood schools, and again, they they stayed in touch with each other. And like I say, I mean, just right now, Riverview, I really, I'm really overly overjoyed because was well, saying we came in, my crew came in, James and Roger and all them was like, hey, we family. And when I see him today, big, big little bro, come out, yeah, yeah. And it's just a great feeling. And, and being an only child, to know that I have all these brothers and sisters, it's, I mean, it's, it's a great thing. I mean, but again, okay, so we leaving high school, went to okay. college. In college, you know, you also did something in college. What you do in, what else you do in college? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, let me see what you're going to say. Okay. Yes, I pledged Delta <laughs> Incorporated, um, and I just celebrated my 30th year anniversary. Me too, me too, me too. Congratulations, congratulations. Yes, yes, yes. And um, I was active, like I said, with uh, different organizations. But, you know, I was a leader, as you could say, you know, got a few things done before I left. I started a program called the Multicultural Extravaganza, which was a non-competitive showing of talent. Um, because I didn't feel that people who were um, tap dancing or doing ballet or playing classical music on the piano were any better than a traditional African dance. I just wanted people to do things. And so I created this event and it was free and we got, we gave free food. So that's how we got people there. And, uh, <laughs> and so um, there's two guys, uh, one guy, Chuck D, and um, his name is, is Chuck Davis. Uh, but we, uh, I, I named him the funniest man on campus. And then he became the funniest man in the universe. And he's actually at, um, he went to U City High School, okay. but he is actually in Hollywood. And he, he was in um, that movie, it's How High. Uh -huh. He was in How High and he's friends with, you know, uh, Guy Tori and all those guys and everything. Okay. He's in a lot of commercials and things. Okay. And um, so, and then his uh, roommate, Tyrone Fryson, um, he's a top guy over at ESPN out in LA. All right, and all right. just, just a lot of, amazing people you know that i met in college and um you know just proud of my, my of my brothers and sisters like you said yeah yeah okay so so we leave college and um you venture off to where first you go to you go to la first or you came back yes. home you went to LA yeah so i came home um and i worked i had seven jobs because i didn't have any money so my, my main job was working at twa so when I so let me just tell you the quick story. When I graduated, I wanted to be a positive influence on my community, and I wanted to travel. That's all I knew. But I didn't have any money, <laughs> and I wanted to be a positive influence on my community. So my stepmother called me and said, um, "You know, TWA is hiring," and I was like, "Oh, for what?" And she's like, "In the reservations department." And then she said, "Well, if you um, if you work there, you can fly anywhere in the United States for free." Or twenty twenty five dollars you can buy. Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember them. Let me sign up. <laughs> so I wasn't hardly making any money, but I had great benefits. So I was working like the four to twelve shift, and then I started substitute teaching at Riverview, and I did some Hazelwood, Normandy. That only lasted for like two days. I was like, I cannot do it anymore. I'm so serious. I was working at uh, my dad's law office, and then uh, working at my mom, helping my mom. I mean, I had like five jobs. I was a cocktail waitress on Friday and Saturday nights when I didn't have to work because I didn't make enough money, but I was hustling. And then I went out to LA to visit on a, on, for five days. And I was like, I'm moving here. <laughs> and let me tell you how I got there. So every day when I, when I was driving my car, I had a brown Ford Pinto Pony by then. My cutlass was gone. I had a Pinto Pony. Okay. <laughs> I was driving and I had my tape deck and I was playing Route 66 <laughs> by Natalie Cole. <laughs> now you go to the St. Louis and Dallas, Missouri, Oklahoma City looks mighty pretty. You see Amarillo, Gallup, New Mexico, <laughs> Keith Lynn Bosco, San Bernardino, <laughs> right next to LA. 
LA. So, hey, you picked me up on Route 66 and I was going, but I flew on TWA. Okay. <laughs> so I lived in LA for almost 10 years and um, I wanted to stay with TWA, but they would not, they said I had to work full time if I stayed because they really wanted me to stay. But I was like, I can't afford to make, you know, $6 an hour living in LA. I have to do mm -hmm. something else. So that's why I didn't stay with them. But I was able to, you know, switch sh shifts and keep my um, benefits going. So whenever somebody came out to visit me, I had them bring a box, bring two boxes, bring th three boxes. And so I ended up living in LA for almost 10 years. Wow. And um, I did a lot of different things. Yes. I, uh, I, I worked for this crazy lady in Hollywood and then she started bouncing my check. <laughs> then I worked for another crazy lady. She was, a, this was a crazy black lady. Then I worked for a crazy white lady. And then I was like, I'm done. And then I went to a tip agency. I was like, give me a real job. And then that's when I worked for the transportation planning and traffic engineering company doing marketing. And then, um, I, I, then I, I was married to my college sweetheart, your fraternity brother and divorced. And then I was like, I need a change in my life. So this one guy was like, come to this meeting. And, and, you know, this might be an opportunity. I was like, is it one of those multi-level marketing things? Because if it is, I'm not going. Just tell me now. No, no, no. I promise it's not. So I go. I have my briefcase. Because at that time, we were carrying briefcases. Mm -hmm. And I went, and I was standing in the back of the room pissed because it was an <laughs> ATM meeting. And I was like, oh, that's multi-level marketing for those of you who do not know what I'm saying. <laughs> he was like oh i can't believe it he he brought me here to it so why did he lie to us and we're just talking he's like well what do you do i said well i do marketing for an engineering company but i you know i've reached my my ceiling and i'm looking for something else to do he said well what's like do i said something in beverage or television radio or something he said well i work for anheuser-busch and my boss is looking for somebody in marketing i think you would be a perfect fit if you give me your resume i'll tell her i was like i'm here <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I became a contemporary marketing team representative for Anheuser Busch, okay. and uh, that was really fun. I used to do bar and club promotions, and I used to have the Bud Girls, and you know I would wear referee outfits and all kinds of stuff, <laughs> big signs, like I was doing in Pep Club. You know, we had the big banners yep, and yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and right on them for Bud Night. Um, when the WNBA um, premiered the Sparks, you know, I was out there as a sponsor. We had little mechanical surfboards and all that kind of stuff wow. at the, at the uh, forum. Um, just a lot. Of, I went down to Mexico for a spring break. And by that time, I was like 27. I'm seeing these little kids and they're drunk out of their minds. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like get me out of here after two weeks. I was like, I got to leave. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, then. I was doing some promotions for Budweiser and I used to buy um, the program director. He worked for KCE Radio and he used to do um, promotions every Wednesday night at Little J. Okay. And so that was Budweiser night. So I would always buy him a bucket of Corona every <laughs> Wednesday night, okay? Because Budweiser owned Corona. Right, right. He'd be like, you know, get your Budweiser, you know, whatever. <laughs> <So> <laughs> So one night he was looking all tired. I'm like, what's wrong with you? He was like, oh, my sister's on maternity leave. I'm dying over here. It's just this, this. And he's complaining. I was like, well, what do you need? And he's like, oh, I need this. I need this. I said, well, I'll come help you. He said, you have a job. I said, I know, but I mean, I do promotions at night. I, you know, I can, I can come. And he's like, okay. So that Monday, or no, that was a Wednesday. So on Friday, I came to the office. I sat at the desk in the little area. Uh -huh. And then Smokey Robinson walked in, said hello. I was like, hey. <laughs> I, doing work. I was doing all the work. And then nobody asked me who I was. They asked me who I was. I was just doing a little work, right? Just happy to be there helping. That's all I was doing. Right, right, right. So, <clears throat> after a week and a half, I left because she it was time for her to come back or whatever it was. And then he's like, I would like to hire you as our promotion director. <laughs> Because I'm losing my job. They're getting ready to stop this thing at Budweiser. So that's awesome. So that was my favorite job because as promotion director, uh, you know, the Magic Johnson Theater was there. So I was giving away uh, movie tickets on the radio. I was putting together all the packages. You know, I was doing Easter egg hunts and Halloween stuff. We were doing turkey giveaways to, you know, different to Mexico. I mean, just all kinds of stuff. It was like, it was the perfect 
job for me because I had radio time and whatever we could get, whatever we couldn't get, I would call people and trade them for tickets or trade them for watches, get whatever we could. And it was just awesome. And I loved it because I was able to um, engage uh, families and kids and stuff as opposed to just the bar setting. Right. And so we came up with this thing, um, Soul on the Streets. Okay. So I would take the van to Compton <laughs> or Beverly Hills or the jungle, whatever. I would drive the van and I'd be like, um, I had some intro music and Bill Sharp would play the intro music. He'd be like, oh, oh, oh. Who, who's on the radio? Uh, who could it be? And then I'd be like, hey, Bill Sharp is Jolita and Patty and KACE was fall on the streets. <laughs> And the first five people who say KCE for Soul and Treats will get a gift, a Jiffy Lube gift certificate. We <laughs> all day, come on out. Right, right. Hey. And it was so much fun. And then I would go get my hair done. They'd be like, oh, we heard you on the radio giving out those, those Earth, Wind, and Fire tickets. <laughs> Whatever. So it was just like perfect. And then we found out that um, the station was going to be bought by Mexican Radio. So we were losing mm. our job. Mm. And another friend was like, hey, Kavatia is looking for somebody to represent them on the West Coast. Would you be interested? I was like, sure. So then I got that job when the station was ready to close. So I had that yeah. and did a whole bunch of stuff. And I mean, I met so many people, did so many things and um, sponsored a lot of things. And it was just amazing. And then I started getting burnt out because um, a lot of people would say, oh, let's do lunch. Let's do lunch. Mm -hmm. And it's really about what you have and who you know and what you can do for them. And, you know, being a Midwest girl, I was a little different than that. So mm -hmm. um, I loved my time in L.A., don't get me wrong. But at the time and with the people, I had a lot of Mizzou people who came out there, um, sororers and other people. And it was just an amazing life to be 20-something in early 30s. And I loved the opportunity. And, you know, we have our, our friends in common, uh, Derek Granberry and things like that. Say, yeah, I'm about to um, say that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I, when I worked for Cavassier, um, the brand, the Allied Demex, the company who owned it, um, they bought Stoli Vodka. Okay. And they were like, you know, we want to do something big. I was like, nobody cares that you all bought them. You're not changing the brand. You're not changing the label, anything. You, if you want to make a splash, do something big. Like, do, do a party at the Playboy Mansion. And they were like, can you make that happen? I said, sure, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and it happened. And then they were like, and then I was like, we need a DJ. And so I called Derek. I was like, can you be my DJ from Riverview Gardens class that's 89? It, that's it. That's it. Hey. He was like, yeah. And so <laughs> I, he's been there since then. But um, you know, doing that, I mean, it was like it was family, you know, and, and Derek needed a place to stay. He had moved that out is. with a couple of former classmates and they didn't. They, they were moving back or something like that. And um, I was like, well, Derek, I have a one bedroom apartment. Um, I, don't, I mean, if you if you can't stay anywhere else, I'll let you stay with me, but let me make a phone call. And then I called some other friends and, and he he's from St. Louis and I called them and they had an arrangement and he stayed on their couch. And then when somebody moved out because of four of them, he moved in. And I'm, I'm just so proud of him. Yeah, and and yeah. he goes to show how, when you're connected with people, when you have a common ground, um, you know what I, I mean it was like God put us together I saw him that day he told me what was going on and it was like boom 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 and he's still out there and he's doing his thing smooth yeah. mellow D. Oh, yeah, or yeah, yeah. I don't know which one if he still has that and so um, all I can say is you know my prayer my thought was I wanted to travel and yeah, I wanted to make a difference if you say it, yeah. and, and that's basically I've had a lot of different jobs doing marketing all that kind of stuff and then I started doing training I was doing training when I was doing the work with Cavassier, teaching them how to um, talk to people, talk to them about how to do mixed drinks and to get our brands and things like that. And I just feel like it's just been a blessing because I wasn't, if somebody didn't drink, I didn't tell them to drink. Right. But if they did drink, then drink what we're talking about. Right, <laughs> you know, right. and, um, you know, I just, a lot of things happened in my life. And um, at the same time, I started going to Della Reese's church, the, the actress Della Reese, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I um, got saved. And um, then I started becoming a teacher through the church. I learned. I was a student. And then finally, she's like, do you want to learn more? I was like, yeah. Then somehow I was in classes. <laughs> I'm like, I need help myself. I'm going to help somebody else. I need help. I done gone through the divorce. I done got lost in a new relationship again. I need help. And then, I, you know, and then I'm like, then, then they want me to work for Budweiser. I talked to my, my, my reverend, not Della, but her assistant. Right, right. I was like, you know, I think it might be a conflict to work for Budweiser. <laughs> and then he was like, well, didn't God make beer? 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let me stop. But like I said, I don't mean, no, no, again, that, that goes to show, because like I said, you started off your degree. Is it what? It was supposed to be in business, <laughs> but it was an interdisciplinary studies. <laughs> and then you kick off and you, because you snuck it, as you said, you moved and you snuck it in. And I said, uh, she didn't say it twice. Became marketing. Uh, <laughs> you know, and it's like, and again, it was the fact of, just the way things happen and how you make the adjust to it. I mean, and then I say, and then getting to the point to where you're moving and shaking and opportunity comes up to where, hey, we gonna, we want those, we want to do something, do something big, boom. You think of family. Derek, you want to come out here and, 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 and spin at the Playboy Mansion and da, 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 and boom, open the door for him to where, like I said, he's still out there now, and D doing that thing. I had D on the show when we first started back. And I mean, it's just, just I mean, just to sit back and watch family doing their thing. It, I mean, you can't help but celebrate it. And again, that's why Mr. Parker neighborhood is so important to me because I'm looking at my family and friends that I got around me like, yeah, watching y'all do stuff has helped me to do things to where, like I say, if I, at the end of all this, I can put together a video book you won't have to ever see my face and I can just deal with everyone telling because each person has put something in me to help me move to the next level. And like I said, I mean, it's just, it's just a beautiful thing. And like I said, we talked about it before. Now we finna go from, from, from that situation of marketing to the book writing because, okay. uh, yeah, you, 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 I mean, when you started, when you, when you did, when you were doing, well, let's start off let's, when you were doing, the uh the the life coaching yes the life coaching it was like i mean it was your calling because your thing was was it is always you always have been able to see things in people and try to help them to understand what it is they can do and should do but again you've never forced them it's like hey have you ever thought about or well, what about and then you sit back and you let them say what they're gonna say and people say I do that too, to the point where I say two words, it's like, okay. And before you know it, you done told your whole story. So, well, you just said it right there. Yeah. But I mean, that, that's your gift that you have to helping people release and relax and see the potential you see in them. Because oh. I mean, you, you, you do that, but that's absolute good. I mean, you, you ran with that one and it, it's, yeah. Go ahead, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so absolute good training and life skills management. I started that company now 23 years ago um, in June. And so what happened was the Playboy Mansion, I was at, I was on the grounds on the tennis court and I was stuffing gift bags for the, for the, um, the, the people, for the guests. I was literally standing there and I said, God, I'm a clean color girl from St. Louis and I'm here at the entertainment capital of the world. And I was thinking about Derek over there and I was thinking about all these girls because I had an agency where I was employing the girls and I also had Cavassier. So they worked for me and my company. So I had a staffing agency by that time and I had the marketing, okay? And I just felt like, wow, I have like 20 people who I'm paying money, you know? Now they were making $15 an hour at that time and a minimum of three hours a night and sometimes more. And so I had, you know, anywhere from 15 to 25 promotions every weekend. So, you know, it was wonderful. I, I was generating a lot of money and I was helping to employ people who were over 21 who were trying to get their start. Right. And so it was wonderful. And I just said that day, I said, I could not have imagined doing this. And now instead of doing events, I want to create events in people's lives. Mm, mm. So Lord, what will you have me do? So after that night, um, things were kind of winding down. I was kind of burnt out and I decided to come back to St. Louis. And um, I had really enjoyed training people and teaching them about communication. And that actually started when I was substitute teaching at Riverview mm -hmm. um, when I was when I was in college. And, you know, I would just do these little impromptu workshops with the kids like, you know, let's go to college. And what are you going to take to college? Mm -hmm. You know, and then shower shoes and this and this. And this. They're like, what? why do we need shower shoes? We could do all these fun, wonderful, analytical type of games. But I just kind of came up with it in my head. So when I was teaching, you know, my staff, it was just natural. 
And so um, somebody had told me about monster.com back in the day, if you remember monster.com, yep, yep. had mm -hmm. the, the job site and they had a program and they were teaching um, kids about going to college and going to high school and, and um, making it. I can't remember what the name of it was. So that's when I learned about how, oh, making high school count and making college count. Okay. And so they had an ad and they said, you might have to talk to up to 500 kids for 45 minutes. I was like, well, shoot. <laughs> I think I can do that. 